It's that time of year again. 2019 is winding down and we're looking forward to 2020, which means that you need yourself a 2020 calendar. So why not get yourself one to enjoy, featuring original photos from around the Disney parks while supporting this podcast at the same time? In addition to the traditional wall calendar that we've sold in the past, this year we're also selling a desktop calendar that comes in a handy little case for easy display. Whether it's for yourself or as a holiday gift for a loved one, you're sure to love having a touch of Disney on display all year long. It would even make a great prize for one of those white elephant gift exchanges you know you'll get yourself roped into during the holidays. So head to DisneyCoastToCoast.com to order your Disney wall calendar and or desk calendar today. Your purchase helps me produce future free episodes of Disney Coast to Coast for your enjoyment. Now on with the show. You unlock this podcast with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of magic. A dimension of dreams. A dimension of Disney. You're moving into a realm of both wonder and fantasy, of news and ideas. You've just crossed over into Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly, and on today's show, I have Kimberly J. Brown joining me from the Disney Channel original movie, Halloween Town, a film in which annual viewing during the Halloween season has become quite the tradition for many fans. Listen as we discuss her experience making the films, what it was like working with film legend Debbie Reynolds, as well as some of her Halloween traditions from childhood and today. This interview was conducted live in front of an audience this past August at the Halloween and Horror Convention, Midsummer Scream, in Long Beach, California. I hope you enjoy this exclusive DCTC interview with Kimberly J. Brown. Hi, Kimberly. How Hi, are you? I'm great. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Are you guys enjoying Midsummer Scream? How many are here for day two already? Excellent. And are you exhausted? Because. I am. <laughs> anyway, I think you all know why we're here. We're here to talk about Halloween Town. Awesome. A little film from the Disney Channel that a <laughs> lot of people, it's become such a crazy Halloween tradition for people. And I am curious because, you know, as an actor, you get roles and sometimes you take this job because, hey, it's money and it's wonderful, but you're not necessarily a fan of the genre or whatever. But did you grow up loving Halloween? Oh, absolutely. I, I, there's, I tell people there's really should be no surprise that I'm an actor and have been one since I was five or six years old because Halloween was my time as a kid to become a different character. And, and I mean, I was just, I was all for it. I've, you know, when fully immersed myself in being a, you know, a princess and a witch. And I just, I mean, that was so exciting to me to be able to get to become a character and then get rewarded for it with candy. I, I can't imagine a better holiday for a child. <laughs> it's kind of a job, right? You've you yeah. got to go out, you got to earn this candy. And <laughs> exactly. The better you look, the more you get, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, so since you were such a big Halloween fan, what were some of the traditions? Because now a lot of people, the tradition truly is sit down, watch Halloween Town, which is awesome. It's amazing. It's such an honor. We, we had no idea when we were shooting the first one now over 20 years ago, which is crazy to oh, say. Um, it, but it's amazing that people have now included that in there. We're so touched that people still love watching it. But um, as far as, I mean, I I loved, um, I love the, the fall feeling anyway. I love, I mean, I... I will fully admit I am a pumpkin spice supporter, and uh, I love the just the whole feeling of the you know the leaves and the cooler weather and the just that was I love that time of year. So it was just always fun to be able to kind of jump fully in and and uh, you know go after the good candy and and get to uh, you see my friends in in different costumes as well and and enjoy like the you know there truly is kind of a a magical feeling to that time of year. Yeah, I would. Where did you grow up? Um, I'm from the East Coast. I was born in Maryland. Oh, so you had real Halloween. I did. I did as well. Sorry, SoCalers. <laughs> anybody, anybody here from like that New England area at all? There yes. you go. Okay. okay. Seriously, there's no ha SoCal Halloween is amazing, and we have like the greatest haunts here. But if you ever get a chance, go to New England. Yes. In October, 
try to avoid rain. But <laughs> if you get like that amazing fall weather with the real foliage, not the fake stuff exactly. you see in the Exactly. Yes. Incredible. In Salem, have you gone to Salem, Massachusetts? I have ever? not. Well, no. You got to. I know. That's like still a place I need to. I've been to Boston a couple times for work, but I've never gone to Salem. So that's, that's I, a yeah. Must. That's yes. a bucket list thing. Yeah. But guys, get to New England. It's incredible. <laughs> so some of your traditions were, did you have any, was there a TV special? Was there the Great Pumpkin or anything? Oh, like absolutely. Yeah. The Great Pumpkin was probably one of my favorites. That whole, um, you know, I'm, I'm from the, it was the, the TGIF era of, you know, Friday yeah. nights when we were, you know, in okay. the 90s. But um, Let's sing the song, shall we? <laughs> it's Friday night. I see, I don't you don't remember. know, and the I don't moon remember. is bright. Oh, yes. Gotta I don't remember. The... I'll show you how it's done. TGIF. There you no? go. Hey. Am I the only one here? Who? Oh, you got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. And uh, yeah, so. Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, for sure. That was kind of like the, I, I feel like the special that sort of kicked off the season for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a, I was a big fan of um, the Olsen Twins, um, Double Double Toil and Trouble yeah, was one was of my favorite one. like Halloween-esque movies. Um, and then it, it, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones that would come on. I, I think there was always, you know, a, again, um, 90s girl, but the, you know, those VH, VHS tapes lined up and that you know so you'd pull from some of those those just those classics you know you can't you can't go wrong with putting you know one of those in and that's how you knew the the fall season was starting the amount of nostalgia we're hitting on right it's, now it's it's yeah it's amazing so <laughs> uh, were you ever into the the one I love that a lot of people don't really think about is Garfield's Halloween Adventure I don't Do know that I've ever seen that one. Oh, okay. It's, it's on All the right. holiday DVD. It's really okay, good. Okay, cool. So those were your traditions from childhood. Yes. But these days, you're, I mean, you're kind of a Halloween queen now. <laughs> so what are some of the traditions that you have whenever Halloween rolls around? Are you one of those people? You know, I hear Macaulay Culkin stays indoors during December so that he can't <laughs> be harassed as the Home Alone kid. Uh do you do that for Halloween or are you out there partying? No, I mean, I think overall it, I enjoy traveling and meeting fans over the fall season and, and it's always been just so amazing to get to, um, just converse with, with fans and stuff like that, um, over the years. Um, one of my favorite things that I did for a few years, um, and then I kind of had to, to stop because it got a little out of hand, but uh, Debbie Reynolds actually gave me this idea, but for a while, um, right after the, I think it was the first or second Halloween Town movie, um, I gave out candy to trick-or-treaters dressed as Marnie in the costume, and would just, I mean, the look on their faces was worth, I mean, it was so much fun to just kind of, you know, like have them be like, trick or treat, and then just like, <laughs> oh my God, you know, but, and, but then it kind of, it, the word spread over the neighborhood and that kind of thing after a while, and it just, you know, started getting some visitors and other times of the year, and it just kind of was like, okay, maybe we need to, you know, but it, Debbie used to do that, would dress up in Aggie's costume and, and uh, give out candy too. So that was, that was fun for a while to, you know, surprise, surprise the kids. That's super cool. I love it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the best traditions I think I've ever heard. <laughs> I am curious, obviously, you know, you enjoyed that costume, but as a kid, do you have a favorite costume that you had? I love, you know, I loved dressing up for Halloween mm -hmm. as a kid, but do you have one? I, kn I just know I repeated clowns a lot and Dracula quite a bit. <laughs> I remember when you were being a princess and getting to, I think, we made, like made my wand out of like different materials, ribbon and, and foil and like, and I had a big tall hat with a ribbon and that was just, I always remembered that year because I kind of really appreciated being able to create part of my costume myself. And so then after that, it had kind of evolved, evolved with, um, it, I, as I got a little bit older, I enjoyed trying out different, um, types of makeup and stuff like that. So we'd, my brother and I would, try to take like characters but put a little like deadly twist on them like I think one year we were farmers back from the dead and I did the whole like skull makeup and everything and so um I I just enjoyed being able to um you know be creative in that way and and do like the makeup and stuff like that you answered that question 100% correctly because thank you you made your costume <laughs> anybody here store-bought costume people 
No. Now they're not going to raise okay. their hands. Yeah, they're all scared now. <laughs> That's, you know, n- nothing against it. No, cool no, stuff. absolutely but not. And you, I bought costume, you sure. know, stuff before, of course. Yeah. But when you, the reason I think why you remember that one specifically is because that was one you made or somebody in your family made. And, absolutely. And it's so cool. And there's nobody out there with that costume, you know? <laughs> yes. So it's it's so cool. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So great. So you do, you get this Halloween movie, you're a Halloween fan. It's on the Disney Channel mm-hmm. at that point in your life. Are you a Disney Channel fan? You know, the first one, the first Halloween Town was, I believe, only the second or third ever original DCOM that they did. So it was a, a very new channel at the time. Like, I don't even think it was um, available in all cable stations, like, across the states. Yeah, because it was pay. from. I think it was 1983 is when Disney Channel came along, something like that. But it was pay for many, many, many years. Yes. Like, I remember when we, I, I think it was after I did Quince for Disney that we did a whole uh, unveiling in New York when it had, like, kind of, I think, I can't remember. Um, it, it just it had, you know, become available in more stations. So we kind of, over the years, got to really watch it grow. And so that was really exciting because um, I, of course, was a Disney fan you know overall but it was really fun to be a part of it from the ground up and kind of watch um not only you know people watch more of the movies but just watch the channel in general become more popular and more families and everything be able to enjoy you know that kind of that kind of content yeah i wholeheartedly admit here anybody here steal the disney channel when they gave you those free special the free week Anybody know what I'm talking about? Gosh, you got to be old, I guess, at this point to remember this. But they used to give you a free week. Do you remember this? No, I don't. Oh, right. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> they used to give you like a free week once or twice a year to try and get you to, you know, subscribe. And if you unplugged your cable box the day that they were going to take it away, it, it wouldn't go away. <laughs> so you wait the day and, and then plug the, ba- the box back in and you'd still have Disney Channel for like a good month or something. You're and then confessing some serious it's stuff all right. today. It was a lot. First of all, it was my parents doing it, so <laughs> I can't be in trouble for it. Uh, but yeah, so so Disney Channel, it was. It was a very, very, very special thing. And when it became uh, just general cable, it was a big deal. Yes. And it sounds like Halloween Town kind of was at the beginning of that. So that means a lot of eyes were on Disney Channel at that point. So it, it was, you know, a massive deal for a lot of reasons, I feel like. And I'm curious what the audition process was like and if you have any memories of that. I do. I remember going in and reading, um, I believe it was this scene where Marnie's trying to convince Gwen to let her to go out trick-or-treating in the beginning of the movie and then also the scene where she tells Dylan about overhearing that she's a witch, I think. And so I, I went in, I, I believe I went in twice. I went in and read and then they called me back and then um, I, I think it was after that that we found out that Debbie was going to be playing Aggie and that was just like icing on the cake as far as like being able I was so excited at the prospect of being able to play a witch and have magical powers I just think you know as a teenage girl that was just such a an amazing opportunity but like being able to uh to meet Debbie and to be able to work with her and like and um, it, it just, it became so much more exciting and, and she was, um, so warm and lovely right off the bat that we kind of, we it just, it, I remember being at the table read for the first movie and just all of us kind of getting to meet the core, like Cromwell family members and, and just being like, wow, this is going to be a lot of fun. Do you remember it being like a cattle call situation? Do you know that you were up against a bunch of other people? Did an agent bring you in or was it? Yeah, I definitely yeah. got the audition through my reps at the time. And, and I, I don't remember. I, I believe a lot of, they did have quite the process for, um, auditioning, you know, I, I think all the kid roles. And I, I remember, um, you know, knowing some other people that had, had gone in for it as, as you kind of do over the years of, of growing up in the business, you know, you and your friends kind of, you know, know of different parts and that sort of thing. But, um, I, I was so excited and, and so grateful when I ultimately find, found out that I that had booked it. Cause I, I do remember it, it being a little bit of a process as they all, as all, you know, good auditions and roles are. But, um, that was, that was just especially, you know, exciting. You touched on something that made me laugh where you said, you know, you, you get to know the kids that look like you when you're <laughs> a, an actor of any age. 
You get to know the people that look like you because you see them at one audition after another. Well, you kind of you get to know people. Yeah, I have I have friends in the business that I have known since we were six, seven years old. That we've either worked together or gotten to know each other in audition rooms. And you either you know you're close in age or something. You know you're kind of up in in the in similar age brackets or roles and that kind of thing. And it's it's so amazing to get to know people and and become friends because you're you're going to see each other one way or another you know, for certain roles. So why not, you know, if I can't do something, I'd rather one of my friends do it, you know, so you end up kind of uh, getting to know a, a lot of people and, and rooting for each other, which is so important in any industry, but, uh, you know, especially this one. Yeah, so after that table read, obviously you guys go off and shoot the film, but, you know, you ended up making three of these movies, which is, yes. in, I mean, that's wild, just to even think of. But I'm curious, was there... Did they feel like different films when you were shooting each one? Was it a, were they bringing oh, the absolutely. same crew back or was it feeling very No, we shot them all. The, the first one was shot in, in St. Helens, Oregon. And then we shot the second one in Vancouver, Canada. And the third one in Salt Lake City, Utah. So they were all different crews and producers and everything. And um, I, I think, I do think the movies, they all kind of continue the story and, and keep a lot of the same elements, which was always very important to me as we developed each story and went along. But I think they also have very different tones to them and messages overall, you know, as individual films. So I loved getting to explore, like, the this, this second movie, I think, is shows a little bit of a, you know, darker side of Halloween Town. And, and the third movie was so... Um, unique in that we got to bring the residents of Halloween Town into the mortal world and kind of show what that would be like. So I loved, you know, I love those different aspects of them. Yeah, the third one especially had like a very strong message of, you know, yes. acceptance and, uh, you know, it, we're all one, we're all the same. And, and that one specifically, uh, I think, had a really strong message. The second film you mentioned, do you want to point out your special guest here <laughs> uh, in the audience that people might like? Yes, <laughs> Daniel Koontz, who played Cal. Um, Wave your hand. We're together in real life, and he's hanging out today with us. You met on the film? We did, yes. Look at that. Oh my, you were so mean in the movie, though. I was not the nicest guy. Yeah, he was not, but he's <laughs> you quite... You had the, your reasons, that's right. It's a testament to what a good actor he is, because he's very sweet in real life. There we go. So what were some of the biggest, biggest differences other than location, do you think? I think, well, I, I mean, with the, the second film, it was, um, you know, with the gray spell and everything, I think it just, everything was just a little bit, um, it, it, it showed a little bit of the darker side in the sense of like kind of the, the eeriness of what Halloween Town is like without the magic. And so I think that that was, uh, we got to do a little time traveling and, you know, so that was really fun in, in those aspects. And you actually got to see Aggie, um, I don't think we, beyond that, really ever got to see Aggie, like, without her powers or, like, what would happen if she was sort of, you know, immobilized as a witch. So it was, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit darker. And then the, the third one was, um, it, I really enjoyed the, the aspect of, you know, the, the secret clubhouse that they had and the, the characters unzipping and, and, you know, getting to sort of have, one aspect that they showed everybody else and that, you know, they're in their true selves, but it was, um, I, and I loved, I loved the uniqueness of the, the characters that we got to kind of show in the third one, like, you know, the Natalie, the troll and the, you know, it wasn't just, we got very specific and I loved that it was, you know, kind of creatures of all different kinds instead of, you know, ghosts and goblins and what people kind of typically would equate, um, Halloween with, you know. So you shot multiple, but obviously you went in, you were hired for one movie. Yes. There was no idea there was going to be a sequel. No. Because <laughs> nobody knew it was going to blow up. But how long was it after that original film was released that you found out there was going to be a number two? Because the first one came out in 98, second one came out in 2001, so it really wasn't that much later. Yes, I don't, I don't remember the specific timeline, but I believe um, it was at some point in... I want to say maybe mid 2000 or early 2000 that we 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 got feedback right away at, at the, how well the first one had done and that was so exciting just in general because you know as an actor having any project coming out and and just you know hoping <laughs> just I hope a couple people watch this movie so it was exciting to hear that you know that it had done well and that people really responded well to it and then i i believe it was I, maybe earlier mid 2000 that they had started exploring the idea of okay so what happens you know next for the cromwells and i was thrilled 
Now, did that send your head spinning of, you know, you hear, okay, there's going to be a sequel. Obviously, at that point, you don't know what the story is going to be. But mm-hmm. you're like, oh, this is what I think should happen <laughs> next with my character. Did you have any of those kind of dreams? Oh, I think, I, I think I've always enjoyed kind of exploring in my mind well, all the different things it, Marnie and the family could, it, could do and all the different adventures they could go on. And I really loved that we got to... Um, kind of still keep in the the elements of the kids um going off on their own adventures with grandma aggie and i loved that uh gwen you know we kind of saw her eventually kind of you know accept the overall um idea of all of us wanting to just you know run off and and explore our magical powers so i think uh, we were all excited to kind of see what, you know, the potential of wh- what we could do also as we were getting older. Because, you know, Marnie wasn't 13 anymore. Now she was 16. And, and you know, being a teenager in high school is quite an adventure in and of itself. So it was it was fun to see Marnie's, um, Marnie's powers develop, but also what, you know, kind of she was becoming, you know, more an, of an adult throughout the movie. So I liked that we got to see the, the whole family grow up. Now, did you feel like after you shot the second one, did you feel like you were going to get a third? Oh, I no, I don't. We had no idea that I think you know that it. We were hoping that everybody. Each movie that you do, you just like I said, kind of hope that you know people tune into it. Like, okay, we're gonna you know make a sequel, and sure. I think that was probably one of the uh, early on. I want to say it was one of the like first sequels that they had started to do. So it was a newer concept, I think, for the channel as well. So it was just, you kind of go along and just say, okay, well, you know, we really hope people like this one and like all the characters and stuff like that. And uh, so we were just grateful that 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 was even, um, you know, that we we were even there doing a second one. Yeah. Now, I am kind of curious, is it a tradition for you at all to watch these around Halloween time? <laughs> I've I've seen them a little bit over the years. I have uh, nephews now, and and um, so I've I've watched aspects of the movies. I haven't. I, it's been a very long time since I've actually like sat and watched it from beginning to end. Or I've done different appearances where they've shown clips. So that has been fun to get to to relive um, different aspects of the movie. But I I always see it very differently. It's very hard for me as an actor to watch myself in general because it's just odd but um i i always see i just i have so many memories that flood back from watching each scene so it's always quite uh it's always quite an experience they're great memories but you just kind of remember like different details of of shooting and that kind of thing yeah like off camera stuff yes. where you're like so and so is over there eating the sandwich right, right yeah, yeah you just remember the like the oddest little you know things that kind of stuck out to you that day or how you put it together and i've I, I just I'm I'm such a movie and TV lover in general that I love being able to see how you know they do special effects and magic and that kind of thing. So that those aspects um, I've loved over the years getting to see how we've developed um, different technology to you know do cooler things on screen. Yeah, because there was quite a bit of computer work for a, a I mean a Disney Channel TV movie. Yes, they certainly didn't. Stri- it's magic, so you know they had to do something <laughs> to make it work. Right, uh, but. That's, yeah, so so you haven't seen it that recently then? I It's been a while since, I guess it was maybe a, a few years ago, I sat and watched the first one with a couple good friends of mine that hadn't seen it. And we kind of had it They'd on. They'd never seen it before? Yeah, they oh, had it on in the fun. background. Yes. What and kind of watched think? it through. Oh, they loved it. They thought it was, you know, and, and it's, it's so funny to me because I just, I look, I feel so young in that movie that it's kind of a kick for them to watch and go, oh, look how young you are. And like, it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's kind of, it's surreal really to get to watch yourself um, so many years ago. And and then with people who know you now, it's just, it's a very interesting experience. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to say one line from the movie. I think, <laughs> I think you know what it is, right? I mean, if you had to guess. Oh, I would guess it would be, uh, uh, Halloween is cool, nature boy. There we go. Yeah. Classic, classic, <laughs> classic line. I have a question from Cindy Campos on social media who wants to know which of the films is your favorite? You know, I get asked that a lot and it's it's hard for me to pick. I, I think the first one is so special just because it was the, the origin story and, and I just love um, the original Halloween Town, you know, where we shot it and, and everything. But I, I do love... 
each one of them for kind of, you know, what I mentioned before, I loved the second one for the different darker aspects we got to show. And I, I love the third one too. I was supposed to say the boyfriend. You like the second one for the boyfriend. <laughs> that goes without saying. But, uh, the third one too, I think is, is, they're all, they're all just, they're all unique. But I think the first one, you know, it's, it's hard to pass up sort of the original, you know, establishment of, yeah. of the movies. Yeah. Absolutely. Another super fan question here, AJ, who owns Sophie's hat. I have met AJ. Oh, yes. You know AJ. Okay. Yes, he came to an appearance I did and, and brought the hat and I hadn't seen it in twenty years. Do you it know was how really he got cool. It? I think he said he got it at like a prop place in Hollywood or something like that. Yeah. Well he it was owns, so cool. He owns Sophie's hat. He wants to know, <laughs> have you revisited St. Helens, Oregon, and have you had any memorable fan encounters there? That's a great question. I have been back to St. Helens. They actually recreate Halloween Town each year uh, in a festival called the Spirit of Halloween Town Festival. And I guess they've been doing it in, in over the years in different ways. And then a few years back, they contacted me and asked me to come out. And the first year I went out there, and they, they create the big jack-o'-lantern in the town square, and the city hall is still there. And so it still looks very much like it, it's a beautiful uh, town in, in St. Helens. And uh, so I went back there a few years ago and um, wasn't sure like, you know, how many people were going to show up or anything. And, and we got there and uh, we had to have a, you know, huge police escort. And there ended up being, I think they told us afterwards about 15,000 people that showed up to the town. And some people were standing on the roofs of the buildings and it was probably one of them, just a night I'll, I'll never forget having all those people show up to, I, I lit the pumpkin in the town square to kick off the festival and it was so, so special that um, I couldn't believe all those people came to see the town and, and, and just celebrate the film. It was amazing. Didn't they shoot Twilight there as well? I believe, yeah, I believe they did. It's yes. very, it was very strange because long before I had ever seen Halloween Town, I was obviously aware of the film. But I was in Oregon, truth be told, to visit uh, Roloff Farms, if anybody's a fan of Little People Big World. That's the reason I went to Oregon. And I was just doing touristy stuff during, during the day, and this was October. And I came across Town Square, in, or that area, and I saw the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. And even without having seen the movie, it's like, I'm pretty sure this is Halloween Town. <laughs> so there's obviously like this consciousness out there of of the film even if you hadn't seen it before which i thought was kind of cool and now i look back and i'm like oh yeah that was totally it That's that was that and they was, do yeah. they bring the pumpkin just like in the film and they do it's cool yeah. that they keep that tradition alive i love that we're so touched that they that and that people visit every year and and want to see where it was filmed is just incredible there's something kind of cool interesting with holiday movies is i always say if i was going to produce a movie i'd, I'd want to pick like a holiday that doesn't get tons of representation just because even if my movie is bad it will be played on television every year and you'll keep getting those residuals <laughs> so it's kind of nice just to be in a, hallo a holiday movie uh because it's gonna it's gonna live on forever so i mean knowing that are are you surprised or kind of it's what was expected of a holiday movie that it became as big as it did. I I think we were definitely surprised. I mean, we from if, if I could step out of it from like a fan's perspective, and I I thought the idea of there being a town where it's Halloween every day was so amazing. You know, as a kid, that like I could uh, just I thought it was so um, so special and being able to be around all the you know, the creatures and everything, it was like, oh, this is, this would be really cool if this really existed. And I think we were thinking that, like, we knew it was a special idea, I feel like, and we're hoping that kids and families would love it as much as we did, but we had no idea that it would grow to what it is. And it's just a true testament to the amazing fans that we have that have just kept alive over the years with, you know, on social media and the memes and the, I mean, just, it's, so, you know, the people quote stuff to me on the street all the time. And it's just, it's so special to, you know, have that connection with people. And um, we're just, we're so flattered and honored that that people not only still want to watch it, but still want to talk about it and like come up to me and go, is it, is it airing this year? I have to watch it. Like, it's, it's amazing. You know, as an, as an actor, you hope people at least res respond to yourself or, you know, like a performance, but this has gone way beyond anything we could have ever imagined. I just had an idea. There's a rumor out there. I don't know if you've heard. This is a rumor that Disney is working on a live action Nightmare Before Christmas. 
Oh. Which, as you know, has a place called Halloween Town in it. <laughs> it does. And if Marnie made an appearance <laughs> in Halloween Town in Nightmare Before Christmas, I'm just saying, I think that would be a pretty cool Disney crossover. That, yeah, that would be, those would be two worlds colliding for sure, like in a good way. Yeah. But yeah, that would be, that would be quite the crossover. And since, you know, Disney owns both, that would work. But since Disney owns everything these days, <laughs> I mean, we can do with a lot of things, I'm sure. I am curious, do you, we were talking about AJ who has the Sophie's hat. Do you have any of the props or costumes? I do. I have, um, let's see, from the first movie, I have the Halloween Town book. And I have, yeah, the producer was nice enough to uh, to give me a copy at the end of shooting. I have a Calabar's bat, his assistant from the first one that pops up. Um, one of the the uh, executives at Disney gave me that after the film came out, and I just I love that. It's he's he's so cute. Um, but let's see. I think I have Marnie's costume, Marnie's purple costume, which is actually downstairs in my booth. If you guys want to come check it out later. What's your booth number? She doesn't know. It's right at the entrance. You walk in. 912. Oh, look at my oh, manager the team knows. knows. See, yeah. Right. Booth 912. Um, so I have, I have Marnie's costume and I have uh, a couple other little things. Oh, I have the broom that Marnie has in the second movie where she carries it around in her pocket and then she makes it like, you know, grow to full size. I have not the hero broom as, as they call it on set, the one that's on camera, but I have like the stand in broom. They let me keep that. So it, I, I have, you know, little, little things here and there. And are they on display in your home, or do they kind of? No, the they just I keep them in a safe. I keep them in a safe place. I have I have other like photos and stuff like that, but I'm I, I'm too afraid to like do anything with them because I don't want to like <laughs> damage them or have them get too dusty. Like yeah. you know, they're they're a big part of of just my life now, and they have, hold so many special memories. Yeah. Uh, a couple other fan questions: Thirteen Lizzie, twelve oh two, as well as Elise Weiner, want to know. Some stories about working with Debbie Reynolds, which I loved the fact you were talking about when you heard she was hired, that like you knew who she was, it sounded like. And I did. I hadn't seen everything that she had done. I, I believe after she was hired, my dad got me um, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, okay. and I watched that, which was incredible. And then um, I also had, had seen Singing in the Rain, which... She's just was so incredible in, and then I actually ended up watching it again years later. I think in my early twenties, I was doing night shoots on a movie, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna watch this again. And I I just remember getting to the end of the movie and kind of just being reminded. I was like, wow, I can't believe I got to to work and get to know this like amazingly talented woman. Um, but she was every every sort of spirited um happy loving aspect of aggie was who debbie was in real life she was incredibly giving and funny and so supportive of everybody around her she would try to help crew members on set move ladders and and just wanted everybody to shine as brightly as they could and it was such a good thing for me to see at such a young age um she she really taught me what a gift it was to be in that position and and make people so happy it was she just she just was incredible and i think over over the years it was i got to just hear so many different stories about her life and and all you know the different things that she'd worked on and all of her her personal things and like you know there were always so many jokes like to her expense and there was always groups of fans you know waiting outside the the sets and stuff to to get a glimpse of her and she would always take a minute and go say hi to them and and you know introduce herself which she usually liked to do by saying that she would say hi I'm Princess Leia's mom and that was you know her favorite way of introduction but she always took time for people and it was so um it's just so amazing to see yeah she seemed like a person that loved being a star which you know not all stars really enjoy that so much but she seemed to really like it in like the best way. Yes, she loved that. She loved being able to make people happy. I, I actually got to see her a few times in her variety show after we worked together, and um, it, it it was so amazing to see her come out on stage and see all of her different fan groups. And you know, a lot of them are a little bit older, but like the the way they would squeal and scream for her, like she was, you know, Justin Bieber, you know, for like the the older generation was just amazing, you know. And she just loved loved being able to entertain people it was just truly um just you know she wanted to do it every she would have done it every day you know if she could was were you intimidated by her before meeting her like was that was was there that fear of wow this is a you know 
I, Hollywood star. Yeah, I think overall when you you hear you're going to work with somebody really famous like that, that you you never know how they're going to be. But she was immediately just so warm and and um, so caring and loving that it was like that was sort of one of the reasons why I got so excited at that table read to to be able to um, to do the project because I knew once we all met and everybody was just so genuinely happy to be there and excited to get to do this together that it was, you know, it was going to be special. Since you did work with Princess Leia's mom, did you get to meet <laughs> Princess Leia? I know. I actually yeah. never got a chance to meet Carrie. No, she, they, she talked about her all the time and um, they had such a, a, such a special relationship, but no, I never got to meet her in person. I went to her, kind of went to her house because she used to live. Oh yeah. They were like neighbors. Uh, yes. Yeah. And Debbie had the cutest uh, guest house on Carrie's property. So I, I had been there and, and that sort of thing, but never met Carrie in, in person. There were several other people in the films with you that uh, went on to do some other cool, uh, you know, big projects for, well, one horror-related, the other for Disney. But Finn Whitrock was in uh, Halloween High. Yes. Halloween Town High, rather, mm -hmm. and went on to do American Horror Story. I know. what a, Which is, I mean. <laughs> it's like an interesting involvement of, he went from playing like the, I haven't actually seen seen all of his work in American Horror Story, but from what I've, you know, the, yes, that's, <laughs> but to go from sort of being the, uh, the classic all American, you know, kind of love interest in that movie to going to like the darker side of, of Halloween. But I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And then Lucas Grabeel and am I saying this right? Alessia Rulin? Alessia Rulin. Alessia yeah. Rulin. Mm -hmm. They went on to do the high school musical films, which yes. I mean, Gosh, they went from Halloween Town, mega hit, High School Musical, mega hit for Disney, multiple sequels. I was so happy for Pretty them incredible. to get to, yeah, kind of continue, um, continue in the in the in the Disney world, and and those movies were just those movies were so fun. But you know, obviously that they hit quite a, a a core, you know, that that aspect of of high school life, and I was I was so excited that they were a part of those. Now, as a Disney nerd, there are some definite Disney references that I caught watching the films, and I'm curious if you do you, the Mary Poppins reference. Do you? No, I don't. You we move with the bag. Aggie's entrance into this film is on a flying umbrella with a carpet bag. That's yes. And I was like, anybody else ever notice this? I was like, this is so Mary Poppins, it's crazy. There's that, and then you have a great line. I'm curious if, as a kid. Or I guess you were 13 with the first one? Yes. As a 13-year-old, if you really got this reference, because if you didn't grow up near Disneyland, I'm not sure you would, but uh, you're talking about the cab driver, and one of the characters goes, oh, he's probably an animatronic, and you go, when Mr. Lincoln drives me, we'll talk. And I, I actually like, had to ask about that line when we were shooting it, because I had, I had just moved to L.A. a few months prior to getting that film. I was in New York, and I didn't, hadn't, I had been to Disneyland once, I think, but I had not, I didn't quite get that reference. And I remember I had to ask the director about what that specifically was in reference to so I could, you know, obviously say the line correctly. And that was, they had, they explained the whole thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, I found that interesting because that SoCal people, I think everybody gets that, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure everybody would, uh, especially if you grew up on the other coast or something. But that's, uh, I found that to be a funny line. And then, of course, Let's Get Together from The Parent Trap is in the third film. Like a, that's right. a modern version of it. So yes. that's they, they some cool little Disney I love ties. that little montage. Yeah. 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 It's fun. That is fun indeed. I have a question from Mrs. Miracle on social media. Uh, this is a tough question. You've answered it before, though. So, but everybody wants to know why aren't you in Return to Halloween Town, the fourth film, the one I call the one that killed the franchise <laughs> because you are not in it. But That's very um, kind. I mean, do you say what you want to say about it? I it guess. was a combo of things, but I mean, Disney. Were you given a real answer at any point as to why? Well, I think it, overall it was kind of a combination of scheduling and then Disney just chose to kind of, you know, continue with the film with, with somebody else. So it was, you know, it was a combo of things at the time, but, um, I have, I have certainly appreciated over the years all the, the feedback and the fans, uh, support that I've gotten. It was, it's, I still see memes and stuff on the internet and it was, uh, not something I ever expected. So I, it was, uh, it was very sweet of everybody. Have you seen it? I have not seen all of it, no. <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, it, it's not not for any particular reason. I've seen, you know, seen different aspects of it, but I, you know, 
I don't know if I could sit and watch the whole thing. I completely understand. <laughs> I am curious, though, if they were to contact you, say, today, tomorrow, <laughs> would you do another Halloween Town film? Oh, I'm, I'm totally open to any of those possibilities. I think there's obviously a ton more... Um, different stories that can be told in the in the life of the Cromwells and I certainly have been asked that question so much over the years and and uh, I so touched that people still you know want to see what would be going on but you know yes absolutely now as a Halloween fan you actually wrote a Halloween children's book mm -hmm, called yes. Poppins Pumpkin Patch Parade it's very hard to say <laughs> and how did that come about for you I uh, I have a um, I, I have an Etsy store and I in, in enjoy um, painting and, and doing crafts and stuff like that. And so it, it, I worked with a, a writing partner and we kind of developed um, some different ideas about a, a magical pumpkin patch. And I, I know there's a lot of different fans in sort of the, the younger age group. And I have nephews and um, other friends' kids that sort of love this time of year. And so I kind of wanted to pay homage to that and sort of continue the, you know, the, the Halloween magicalness. So it was kind of a combo of, of having sort of an idea for the story and then in enjoying doing a lot of, um, I did a lot of the illustrations for the book as well. And so it kind of, it just kind of all came together at the, at the right time. And I loved that I got to put something else together in sort of the, the Halloween genre for, you know, the, the younger generation and for, you know, families to continue to enjoy. Cool. And that's available at your booth? It is available at my the booth. Booth number yes. 912. There you go. <laughs> Are you working on any other uh, projects or Halloween-related projects uh, currently? Uh, well, I just uh, wrapped a movie uh, for the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. Is it Christmas-related? It is not. It's not a Hallmark no. Okay. Yeah, it's the Crossword Mystery series. I'm okay. in the second episode of that. And... Um, I I continue to um, love all things Halloween, of course. But I have um, there's been a lot of requests over the years in my in my Etsy shop for different Halloween related stuff. So that we we do a lot of like graphic tees and stuff like that um, in that genre and and from the movies. Um, so that's it, it, it. Kind of continue to pay homage, and I, I love that the fans love to continue to keep like that that whole spirit and the of, of the movies uh, alive so it's it's been nice to to be creative in that aspect too uh, go ahead and plug the shop what's the username it's a uh, craftily creative dot Etsy dot com is the actual web address but it's the store is called craftily creative because we do painting and and gift tags I run it with one of my really good friends and we do greeting cards and it kind of started from us um, getting together on the weekends and doing crafts as a hobby and and now five years later we've got t-shirts and hoodies and and I do custom paintings when I'm not working and it's just another another avenue to keep the creative juices flowing so we enjoy it nice anything you want to add before we get going then no I thank you for for this has, this been, has been great such a fun little chat like thank you for having me yes and I thank will. you guys for coming and listening to us talk for Go to booth 912 yes. and uh, check out, if you don't already listen, check out DisneyCoastToCoast.com to check out other episodes, tons of different interviews with Disney legends and such. And uh, on social media, it's DisneyCTC, D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all that fun stuff. Thank you so much. This has been Thank a blast. Thank you. This has been so much fun. Yay. I hope you all enjoyed that interview. I would like to once again thank Kimberly for coming on the show. Now, before we go, I want to remind all of you that the 2020 Disney Coast to Coast calendars are now for sale over at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Each month features an original photo from either the Disneyland Resort or Walt Disney World Resort. In addition to the wall calendar option that we've sold for several years now, we now have a desk calendar option as well. Be sure to check them both out over at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. As we wind down Season 6 of Disney Coast to Coast, your purchase helps support and ensure a seventh season of the show. I wish you all a happy and safe Halloween, and I hope you've enjoyed the four Halloween-themed episodes I've brought to you this year while we celebrate my favorite time of year. Other than that, folks, have a magical day. Bye! Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast! Have a magical day! <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com.